In today's video, we're talking about flying with your camera gear. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be all about traveling with your gear uh, when you are traveling by plane. Now, uh, I'll say this first off, I don't live in the US, I live in Australia. So the information that I'm going to give you today is nothing to do with dealing with the TSA or anything like that because we don't have that in Australia. Um, it's all going to be just practical stuff about packing, uh, what to pack, how to pack it, and why I pack things in a particular way. Um, I'm actually traveling to the UK tomorrow, which is why uh, I just started packing this and I thought that it might make an interesting video. So um, let's talk about, first of all, the types of luggage that you carry with you on a plane. And I'm sure you all know you've got your checking luggage, which is the one that goes into the cargo bay of the plane, and you don't have access to that during the plane. The other one is the uh, the uh, carry-on luggage. So that would be the bag that you take with you in the cabin and it gets stored up on the overhead compartment. So for myself, this is the bag that I use for, um, for carry-on luggage. I don't normally get excited about bags, uh, but this one I do. I've had this bag for about four or five years. It's called, I'll try and get this right. I think it's called the Think Tank uh, hard drive walker or street walker version 2.0. Anyway, it's a really strange name, but there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in about reading or purchasing one of these bags. It, it, it's an amazing bag. First of all, I think Think Tank have made a bag that fits or, or it's the maximum size that you're allowed to have because when it comes to planes, you don't only have a weight restriction, but you've also got a size restriction. There's, um, there's very specific limits on your carry-on luggage. And this bag fits those limits precisely. So they've maximized the use of space. The other thing that they've done is it is extremely, like this, like it's almost unbelievably light. When you first pick it up, it's sort of, it feels weird because it should weigh uh, more than what it does. So I don't know what sort of materials they've used, uh, but they're really hard wearing materials um, and super, super light. Like I said, I've had this for about five years now. They're not the cheapest bags, but it definitely is an incentive. And I own a lot of bags. And like I said, this is the one that I pick up every single time. Um, I, I just normally gravitate to this one. So let me explain to you what goes in here. I've got a few qualifiers that I use to determine what goes in here and then what goes into the uh, check-in luggage. So anything that is expensive, fragile, or battery operated has to go in here, okay? So, um, and, and with the batteries, that is, um, that's just not my thing. That is actually the law. You're not allowed to check in uh, anything that is, or that has a battery, whether that be a removable battery or, or you know, a built-in battery that you recharge. If there is a battery in it, uh, then you cannot check it in because there's um, potential fire dangers because the, the battery could short circuit and you could start a fire. So for those reasons, uh, you should never uh, check in anything that's got a battery. So that automatically will go in here. So um, expensive, fragile or battery operated goes in here. So now let me show you uh, the stuff that I put in this bag and or how I divide my equipment into the two different types of uh, luggages. Okay, so the first thing that I do is uh, the camera and inside of this bag, you've got all these uh, dividers. Um, again, this is not a bag review, but I just wanted to give you a look at um, the inside of the bag. Can you see that there? I think you can, yeah. So all of these move around. Uh, they're all Velcro um, in place. So, uh, and there's pockets all over the place so you can put all your stuff in there. But let's talk about the, the, the equipment that goes in here. So the first thing obviously is a camera. So for myself, um, the 5D Mark IV, uh, that's what I travel with. Uh, it's the lightest camera, full frame camera that I have. So that goes in there. And coupled with that is the 24 to 70. Now I'm not a fan of zoom lenses. I always prefer to shoot with primes, but again, it would just, I'd, I'd need to fill up this bag with lenses in order to get all the different ranges that I use. And so this is one of those compromises that you have to make. And uh, lenses are uh, heavy. So uh, yeah, you just have to minimize with, um, you know, with what you could do. So in my case, 24 to 70. In fact, I'll show you the two lenses that I carry, 24 to 70 and then the 70 to 200. Now these two, all of this bit of kit here in itself is actually quite heavy. So that's going to take up quite a bit of the allowance. 
The allowance actually varies depending on which airline you use, um, but as a guideline, anywhere between eight, 10 kilos, which I think is about 20, 22 pounds, somewhere thereabouts, it, you're not gonna have any problems. Uh, you know, when you get stopped because of weight, if somebody questions the weight, typically if you've got camera equipment, they will let you go in with a little bit more, but it's just something that you need to be aware of. There is also a, um, a weight limit to these, and that's got to do with safety. If you've got one of these bags up on the overhead, uh, overhead compartment and it falls and it could actually hurt someone if it's too heavy. So, uh, but then I try to minimize the weight as much as I can. So things like this, for example, the tripod plates, all of these are gonna come off. So there's another one there on my lens. So all of those will come off and they're not going to go in here because I, I don't care about those. They don't need to be in here. So that will go in there. Um, and uh, then, yeah, my other lens will go in there. Uh, the other thing that goes in there as well is a little pocket Osmo. Um, and I take these in case I want to do some videos whilst I'm away. So that will go in there as well. Um, then we have drone. Um, I use a little, um, this is the, the um, DJI Air, um, Mavic Air. And um, yeah, I haven't updated this because it's tiny and it's, uh, it almost weighs nothing. So that goes in there as well. And I do have somewhere in there, the controller as well. So again, the controller in there. So that fits in there. And then I've got some spare batteries for the drone as well. One of the batteries is already in the drone. And uh, so that goes in there as well. And uh, then we've got spare batteries for the camera. So that is just a little pouch full of batteries. And then it's just cards. So memory cards go in there as well. And then the other thing is a pair of headphones. So these are rechargeable uh, noise, noise cancelling headphones. If you're traveling, I think it's wise to invest in a good set of headphones, uh, noise cancelling if you can. Again, just like, um, just like with the bag, these are probably around about six or seven years old. This is the Bose QC35 twos, I think it is. There's better headphones and I think newer headphones but not for me, I've tried them. I still prefer these ones over all those other type of headphones. So if you're looking for another, for a set of headphones, these are amazing. I'll put a, a link in the description. And uh, so yeah, just in case, you're, um, in case you're wondering or you're curious. So the only other thing, that's pretty much it as far as uh, the camera equipment or anything that's going with me. The only other thing that I add in there is a tiny little tripod. This is the little Manfrotto something. I don't think they make this anymore. I've had this for about 15 years, um, but they make different versions of this. It's just a little desk tripod. And this is this is here in case uh, I want to do um, maybe some time lapse or something during a stopover. In, uh, in Australia, we are pretty much, you know, 12 hours to anywhere. So we have to have stopovers and sometimes those stopovers can take several hours. And so I entertain myself with uh, maybe doing things like time lapse or long exposures or whatever. So that goes with me inside of uh, the bag as well. All right, so that's pretty much it for this bag. The only thing that I would add to this would be a uh, some sort of laptop so, uh, or an iPad or something like that, or both of those. And there is a compartment in this bag here for um, laptop and iPad. And this compartment here will fit the largest uh, MacBook Pro. I don't know what that is, 15 inch or whatever it is. Um, and an iPad as well. So uh, that is pretty much this bag and it probably weighs maybe about eight, nine kilos. So definitely within the uh, the allowance of what you're allowed to carry both in size and in weight. So let's talk about the check-in luggage. Okay, so the check-in luggage is easy. So it do if it doesn't fit in here, it has to fit in there. So let's talk about some of the things that I would put in the other one. Um, let's start off with a tripod. So I've got a smaller tripod, which I'm actually using at the moment, and that's going to go in the uh, in my check-in uh, luggage. When I remove the head off the tripod, then the tripod is only about this long, and uh, so that makes it much easier to fit in there as well. I wrap things in towels so that they get protected as much as possible, um, but that's, you know, tripods, they're not gonna get hurt. They can take a bit of a beating. Uh, the next thing that I do is I also put things in there, such as uh, filters. Um, again, I just wrap these in towels or t-shirts and I put it in there. They don't need to be in there. It's just weight. It's unnecessary weight. So they go into my check-in luggage. Um, 
cables. So I usually have like a little pouch full of different sort of cables. Uh, this also holds chargers for the laptop. Uh, again, I don't need them. Everything is fully charged in the bag and I'll come back to uh, that in a second as to why you need everything charged in there, but you do. Uh, but I'll explain that in a second. So again, cables will go into the check-in luggage. So things like remote triggers, um, there's some more filters in there. Uh, so battery uh, charges for the camera. I tend to, um, I've consolidated and to one charger these days, uh, which is this one here. If you haven't seen a video that I made years ago about this, I'll try and link it in somewhere. But uh, in a summary, this is the best charger you could possibly ever want to have. Uh, it's called the Andoer something. I'll put a link in the description. This charger has four different circuits, so it will charge four different batteries at the same time. And you can mix the type of batteries that you have just by changing these little plates. These are really inexpensive. They only cost a few bucks each. So you just buy a few of these for the old, to, to, to account for all the different types of batteries that you, uh, for things that you own, right? So in my case, I'm taking some Sony NPF batteries. So I've got one plate for the Sony NPF batteries. And then these three here are for the 5D Mark II. So these are Canon chargers and uh, it's got an LCD screen in there and it tells you how far along it is in the charging process as well as USB ports so you can you know, plug other stuff as well. So as an overall um, single solution that can charge a lot of batteries at the same time, this works really well because with the Canon, bat uh, the Canon battery that, I that came with the camera is great, but if you want to charge three or four batteries during the night, then you physically have to get up and, and then keep swapping the batteries once they're charged. With this, I can just put all three things, all the three batteries in there and simultaneously it will charge all the batteries. So it doesn't go as some chargers will do, will, they'll charge one and then when that's charged, they'll move on to the second one and so forth. This one here charges all the batteries simultaneously. So um, in one hour, potentially, you could get three batteries all charged up. So again, I'll put a link in the description if, you, um, if you're interested, but great charger. But this goes in the, uh, in the check-in luggage as well because there is no battery on this. And the last thing that I'll tell you, and this is a bit of a, um, bit of a tip, um, what I see a lot of people doing is they will bring um, the power adapters for whichever country they're going to. And something that's very popular these days are these multi-country or multi-system uh, adapters. They'll have different, different slides that you can um, slide out so that you, in the same adapter, you've got an adapter for the UK, another one for the US, another one for the UK and so forth. Now, the problem that I've seen with every single one of those is that they have a fuse in them. And if you blow that fuse, it just stops working. And I've had the situation where I was charging some camera gear and my wife charged, uh, she plugged in her hairdryer, which sucks up a lot of power and blew up the adapter and then proceeded to try with the next one and blew up the next one as well. And so then it's 10 o'clock at night, you're in a, a foreign country and where are you gonna find a fuse? I mean, it's literally, you literally have to change the fuse. So what I've done now is I use uh, converters or adapters that are non-fused. And although the fuse is a safety feature, I can get around that in a particular way. Now, I don't have the adapters here because I've already packed them, but I'll put a link in the description. These are standard, they're just adapters. So all they do is they change the end of the plug and there's no more smarts in them. And what I do is I bring a power board, or in my case, a power cube. And uh, so I only use one adapter at the end of this and I plug that in. And this is, I buy this locally. This is my, this is from my, my, my country here. So it fits every device that I've got in here. And so using just one adapter, I can plug that in there. And now I've got four plugs or mains, and then I've got a couple of USB ports in there as well. And the great thing is that this has a built-in fuse in here as well. And it's not one that you need to replace. So if you blow the fuse in here, all you got to do, there's a little hole in there. You probably, you won't be able to see it, but there is a little hole in there. You just poke that with a screwdriver or something sharp and you can just reset it. And uh, so that's really, really practical because again, you don't have to carry fuses or go around looking for them. So that is a tip that I, I would tell you is bring either a power board if you like, or get yourself a power cube as well. Again, I'll put a, there'll be links for all of this stuff in the description. This one is, is served me really well because again, there's, there's four outlets and also uh, two USB ports in there as well. So you're not using 
those uh, USB power bricks, uh, you know, taking up space in there, you can just plug them into that. Um, so this is, I think, the way forward really when it comes to power management. So um, I think that that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Oh yes, there is one thing. Do make sure that when you uh, pack your stuff into your, um, your carry-on luggage, make sure that every device that you put in there, if it's battery operated, it needs to be charged or it needs to have, it needs to have some level of charge. Um, what customs will often do, not often, maybe sometimes, I've had it happen to me a few times, but it, uh, uh, sometimes what they will do is they will ask you to power on a particular device. They do that for security reasons, to make sure that the device is what, the, what, you, tell, what you know, what they think the device is. And um, so um, people do smuggle things in, in electronics. So if it's a laptop, they may ask you to power on the laptop. If it's a camera, they might ask, ask you to power on the camera. So if, it's, if there's anything in there that's power uh, or battery operated, make sure that you have at least some charge in the battery so that you can turn it on and show them that it is in fact a camera or a laptop or whatever it is. Okay, I think that's everything. If you did like this video, please don't forget to click the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Again, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I want to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.